in the U.S. support of Ukraine, it, it can't afford to divert military aid away from Ukraine. Uh, Russia is the biggest threat to the U.S., to the West, uh, and, and just to global stability. So wait a minute, Russia is America's biggest threat? Really? I am not saying that Vladimir Putin is some mischaracterized dictator who is really warm and fuzzy inside with no intention of you know, weakening the West. It's not like he's a, a little boy in kindergarten who's uh, you know, pulling on a girl's hair because he likes her. He is a threat, a big one. He's a dangerous man. But the obsession with bringing down Putin, it might be just a little misplaced right now because Russia's Putin absolutely pales in comparison to the threat we face from China and President Xi. That is the real threat. It's not even a fair matchup. It's, it's like Putin is the uh, guy making fries at McDonald's and Z is, you know, Gordon Ramsay. Uh, Putin's the kid running around, you know, field day with an egg in his spoon and Z is Usain Bolt. Putting me, Putin is me, in fashion uh, versus Kendall Jenner, which is really disturbing both of those things. So forget that one. Um, but Putin is a threat, yes. But Z certainly is far more powerful, far more capable, and far more closer to infiltrating the U.S. in ways Russia's couldn't even imagine. Tonight, I will explain the threats from China. Then later on in the program, joined by Peter Swizer, the author of Blood Money, why the powerful turn a blind eye why China kills Americans. He'll tell us exactly why that is, why the far left seems to remain silent about the real biggest threat that we do face. Hello, America. Tonight, I want to focus on the biggest national threat that we're not talking about. I mean, we got a lot of threats out there, but this one is really disturbing because the threat is not just China. The call is coming from inside the house. The weird thing about this multifaceted threat is that it's not even close to being the dominant narrative that it should be. Instead, mainstream media and our leaders are too often stuck on Donald Trump being the biggest threat, or Russia, an alleged Russian disinformation. Not that disinformation from Russia isn't a problem or a threat, it is just that the Russia's efforts are amateur compared to the sophistication of the Chinese Communist Party in its growing war against the United States. Our leaders in mainstream media are obsessed with the wrong enemy. And is that ignorance or have they been bought off? There are individual incidents involving China that get reported and discussed, but there is nowhere near the urgent sustained focus that this threat requires. Why? Every day now, China is probing and exploiting American vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities that are frequently the direct result of left-wing policies and or leadership. Do you remember the spy balloon that happened, when was that, last year, the year before? Spotted over the Western US. It was spotted by a, I think he was a kid who just videotaped it. He was a reporter, went in to uh, his newspaper and said, you see this? It happened in Montana, February 1st. Then it was allowed to drift across the US for more uh, than three days. Now, when I say drift, it, it actually didn't just go with the wind. It was still being navigated and it went over major cities and our military bases before it was finally shot down by the US Air Force off the coast of South Carolina. That happened December last year. U.S. intelligence officials revealed that the Chinese spy balloon used a U.S.-based internet service provider to navigate, as well as to send high bandwidth collections of data back to China while it made its way across American airspace. We asked at the time, why wasn't this shot down earlier? Why was this allowed to go over our nuclear missile bases? Last month, a FOIA request by the Heritage Foundation's Oversight Project found 14 incidences since 2018 of Chinese nationals attempting to gain entry into U.S. military base at Pearl Harbor. Nothing ever happens at Pearl Harbor. 
They also were conducting surveillance, including flying drones over the base. Last September, a Chinese man and woman were found taking photos and videos near a Pearl Harbor security entrance before fleeing in a car with unidentified plates. There have been 100 incidents in recent years of Chinese nationals, often posing as tourists, who have tried to access military bases all across the United States. And thanks to the Biden administration's wide open border policy, China has a much easier way to get these potential spies in and out of the US. During Biden's three years in office, 133,000 Chinese nationals have been encountered at the US border. 30,000 of those have come into our country just since October. There are now more Chinese nationals crossing the border in San Diego than Mexicans. Just last week, three Chinese nationals were arrested trying to cross the border into Maine from Canada in the middle of the night. A fourth, who was driving a car, was arrested on suspicion of attempting to assist the others. Last year, a Border Patrol memo identified 270 suspected properties in rural Maine that are used for illegal marijuana growing and operated by Chinese nationals. Remember this, because marijuana, man, is fine. I mean, everybody does it. Remember, they're growing marijuana in Maine and all over the US. That's gonna come in handy to remember here in a few minutes. The massive profits are funneled back to China or used to finance other illegal activities, including drug and human trafficking. In San Francisco, US sovereignty is undermined in absurd ways, but it's San Francisco. There was a law passed in 2020 that eliminates the requirement to be a US citizen to hold seats on city boards. So last month, San Francisco Board of Supervisors unanimously appointed Kelly Wong to the city's elections commission. Now Wong is not an American citizen. She's been in the US since 2019. She's an immigrant rights activist from Hong Kong. Here she is after winning the board appointment, giving an interview in Chinese. 咁就其實喺兩年前我嚟到三藩市嘅時候咧，咁我就認識咗好多原來三藩市有好多嘅誒權利嘅喎，好多權利係好多三誒個非公民啊。For all of us who speak Chinese, uh, you know exactly what she was saying. Kelly Wong may have absolutely nothing to do with the Chinese Communist Party, but what if someone in that position did? San Francisco now has someone who is not a U.S. citizen and cannot legally vote in charge of supervising the elections. Regardless where Wong's national loyalties lie, her political loyalty is apparently left wing because she works for a group called Chinese for Affirmative Action. According to their most recent published annual report, they're funded by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, Google, and the Tides Foundation, among other uh, left wing groups. Then there is one of the most immediately pressing threats to Americans, the Chinese government's hacking operation. Last year, the Chinese military hacked into around two dozen US power and water utilities and communications and transportation systems. They breached a water utility in Hawaii, a major port on the West Coast, an oil and gas pipeline, and attempted to hack into the Texas power grid. Despite all of this, in 2022, the Biden administration shut down the China Initiative at the Justice Department. This was a program started by Donald Trump in 2018 to prosecute economic espionage and stop the stealing of intellectual property by Chinese government agents. Why on God's green earth would you shut that down? Why? Left-wing activists said the program allowed the FBI to unfairly target Asian Americans. Really? Cry me a river about being targeted by the FBI. Honestly, the CCP must be in awe of how easy Americans make this. China is flooding the US with such a wide spectrum of attacks 
that they test tend to blend into the background noise of our national chaos. Too few of these attacks get the sustained attention that they deserve from our media and leaders. Instead, when China's President Xi visited San Francisco last year, remember what happened? Just like all in, in all dictatorships, they cleaned the streets, they cleared out the homeless, they swept up all the used needle, the excrement, and lined the streets with communist Chinese flags. Why is there such a tendency from our leaders to roll out the red carpet for China? Is it their money in business? Or is it their money behind the scenes? To help answer that and other vital questions tonight, best-selling author and journalist Peter Swizer is joining me. Few people, if any, have done uh, more research than Peter and his team on the threats posed by the Chinese government, as well as China's financial ties with American elites. It's not just the Bidens, it is also the Republicans. Peter has chronicled the story of the Biden's corrupt deals with China in his book, Secret Empires and Red Handed. His latest book, Blood Money, Why the Powerful Turn a Blind Eye While China Kills Americans. Peter makes a very convincing case that China is already waging war on the United States. As he points out, the ancient Chinese strategist Sun Tzu said, quote, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without any fighting. Peter is going to walk us through exactly how China is doing that next. Our sponsor tonight is Jace Medical. Right now, the stage is set for massive shortages of really important goods and services around the world. If you listen to my radio program the other day, I was talking about the Complete Lives System, which is part of Obamacare, that says when there are shortages, then the government needs to get together with experts and decide who gets the medicine, who lives, who dies. Um, that's just the truth. And if we enter an emergency situation from either the WHO or, um, you know, just just plain old us screwing ourselves, you need the Jace case. It's a personalized emergency kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. Jace is also continually working to expand their medication offering. So if you have, you know, if you have, let's say, a horse that's sick, you could get ivermectin. Um, you can also get things for your blood pressure, heart medicine, diabetes, whatever it is that you and your family need, you can get and personalize this and have a year's worth supply at your home just to make sure that you don't panic when the unexpected happens. JaceMedical.com. Go there today, enter the code BECK at checkout, discount on your order. It's promo code BECK, J-A-S-E-Medical.com. I want to welcome to the uh, program good friend and one of the journalists that I is definitely in my top three journalists uh, of the day. <laughs> of course, that's not saying much. There's probably only three journalists that are actually doing it now. Uh, Peter Schweizer, uh he's from the uh, Government Accountability Institute. He's the president. He's also written the new book, Blood Money, Why the Powerful Turn a Blind Eye, Why China, China Kills Americans. I mean that sincerely, Peter. You are an exceptional journalist that call the shots no matter where the chips fall, let them fall where they may. And that's what a journalist should do. So thank you for that. Thank you, Glenn. Um, you and I talked um, maybe 2015, 2016, mm -hmm. and Biden was still the vice president. Mm -hmm. And I had said to you, I think this is going to be known, and I was thinking Obama, as the most corrupt administration of all time because nobody was checking on them. Right, okay? right. And you said, no, I'm working on a new book. Biden is the most corrupt politician in U.S. history. That's quite a statement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you published that book. Yeah. And then you published another book about the same right. stuff. Right. Now you're getting down to the answers, possibly, of like, why do we let the spy balloon go? Right. Um, and uh, more importantly, you're bringing to um, the party things that are going on now that are, are literally going to get us all killed. 
Um, so, but let me, before that, let me start with China. I, I know of their um, unrestricted warfare, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think I've heard of the, what is it, disintegration warfare. Yeah. What is that? Explain it's, both for yeah, people who don't know. They're, they're, they're very similar. Uh, yeah. Unrestricted Warfare, as you know, came out of a book written in 1999 by two uh, PLA Chinese military officers. And it basically said, warfare literally has no rules. Uh, it's not just about not bombing civilians. It's anything is on the table as far as what China can use as a tool against the United States. That could be environmental warfare. That could be poisoning the food supply. That could be drug warfare. Sound familiar? Mm. Uh, so there were no restrictions on it. Disintegration warfare is kind of related to that. It's a twin brother, as it were. What disintegration warfare says is we're going to defeat the United States without actually pretending like we're at war with the United States. We're going to seek the disintegration of the United States. It's basically, if I'm not mistaken, what we did, what Reagan, the Pope, and Thatcher did to the Soviet Union. Yes, in they a lot of ways. They them from the inside. Yes, yeah. I mean, I would argue the techniques we used was tr were truth and, yes. and yes. freedom and the appeal yes. of eventual ideas. But you're right, this idea of subversion. Right. Uh, the subversion that they're using is really designed to kill Americans, divide Americans, uh, sow chaos and social chaos in our streets uh, because it will undermine us, we'll turn on each other, uh, and it will sap us of our energy and strength, and they will be victorious. Okay, so let's start with just the the drug warfare. Right. Um, when I saw the opium, the opioid crisis, mm -hmm. I thought of the opium wars. Right. And when <laughs> reread that and read it since I was in school, reread that and I thought that was the British taking opium and pushing it into China, trying to get as many people hooked, and China finally bowed. Yeah. Um, and I thought, that's exactly what they're doing now. But yeah. you say you have proof. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they absolutely view it that way. Um, yeah, if you look at the opium wars, um, you know, China went from being a pretty major power in the early 1800s to a century later, it was a weak and divided power. It was estimated that 25% of the entire population of China was hooked on opium, 25%. Uh, you can imagine this, the energy. I wonder what the sat. percentage is now here. Yeah. And, I mean, and, what, and, and other drugs that come from China. Exactly. You know. Yeah, the opioids and the, 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 the painkillers people are yeah. taking. Um, they talk about this and obsess about it all the time in China. Um, and they view what's going on now as an opportunity for revenge on the West. Of course, the United States wasn't involved in the opium uh, I just war, like to remind them, that was British. <laughs> that was the British, not us. Right, right exactly. It was yeah. somebody, it was those guys over right. there. Um, but there were actually Americans that were involved. As I point out in the book, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's grandfather of course. was actually involved in the, uh, uh, the trade, the opium trade. But they do view it as warfare. And if you look at the manner in which the flow of uh, fentanyl comes to the United States and now increasingly other drugs, you see that it's really really this is Chinese driven, that the drug cartels are the junior partners. The main operation is being done by the Chinese and they view it as a powerful way to frankly kill off some of the best and brightest in the United States because the people that are dying don't know they're taking fentanyl. You know, it's, it's a college student who, you know, says I'm studying for a final and borrows a, an Adderall from somebody and it's laced with fentanyl and they die of this overdose. So it's a very powerful, potent tool. Uh, it's intentional. Mm. They view it as intentional. There are CCP leaders that we know are involved in the fentanyl trade and President Xi doesn't do anything about it because he likes it and thinks it's a good thing for China. So what is provable? Yeah. So what we know is... The provable, not yeah, just no, yeah, yeah. provable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is all based on you know leaked documents we received and Chinese military yeah. journals. Every link in the chain uh, is controlled by China. The precursors, we all know the precursors come from China, right? They arrive in a port, the port of Manzanillo in Mexico, 90% of them arrive there. Precursors are all the ingredients. Yes, the ingredients yeah. that you mix together to make this brew of mm. fentanyl. All of those precursors, 90% of them come to the port of Manzanillo in Mexico. The international terminal there is run by a Chinese company. Everybody wonders why can't they stop this? 
That's it's a Chinese port. Exactly, it's a Chinese port. Once they have those precursors, they send them to a town in northern Mexico where we know, according to our Department of Homeland Security, 2,000 Chinese nationals live in this Mexican town, and they take these precursors and they create fentanyl. Now that they've got the fentanyl, they have to put it into a delivery vehicle, which are pills, pill. right? It has to look like a Vicodin yeah. or an Adderall. You need a pill press and you need molds so it actually looks like a real pill, even though it's a counterfeit pill. Those are provided from China to the drug cartels in Mexico. And according, again, to the Department of Homeland Security internal documents, they provide those at cost meaning they're not trying to price gouge or make a lot of money from the cartels. You wonder why. They now produce these pills laced with fentanyl. In order to distribute them in the United States, Glenn, they need secure communications in order to avoid yeah, U.S. Sure. law enforcement. They use Chinese communication devices because they know the Chinese will not share those with our law enforcement. And then the final uh, piece in the puzzle is money laundering. If you're a you know drug gang, you've got a lot of cash, you need to launder the money. In the days of cocaine, they used to launder that money in Latin American banks. Today, they do it in Chinese state-owned banks, and they often use Chinese students in the United States on education visas to do it. So it is a Chinese operation. The drug Start cartels are the junior partners. All right, so real quick, um, our government, knows everything, they yeah. know all this, yeah. and they're not acting. Yeah. Is, is Biden at all connected with any of these Chinese companies, any of these Chinese people? Yeah, I mean, here, here's the startling thing, and I mean, I didn't think this, this would be the case, but it's absolutely true. There's one degree of separation between the first family of the United States and the drug trade, the fentanyl trade. Uh, and it, it's basically this, the Sinaloa cartel, which, is the, which are the kings of fentanyl, the most powerful cartel in Mexico spreading this poison in the United States, they were set up in the fentanyl trade by a Chinese gang called UBG, which is headed by Zhang An Lo, who goes by the name White Wolf, right? You always wanna do business with a guy named White, White Wolf, Wolf, right? Yeah, yeah. So White Wolf um, has a business partner who gave in 2017 a $5 million interest-free loan to the Bidens, which has of course never been paid back. So you have White Wolf who sets up the, his gang sets up the Sinaloa cartel in the drug trade. You have his business partner who gives $5 million to the Bidens. Does Joe Biden really want to have a conversation about Chinese involvement in the fentanyl trade? If he does, it's gonna blow back on him. And I'm absolutely convinced that's one of the reasons the, some of the five million reasons why he does not want to talk about this issue or do anything. And it's got to be much bigger than that because yes. there's too many people that are uh, silent on it. We're, real quick, one other thing. Um, I want to switch gears here. To increase gun violence, you say in your book, um, the Chinese are, are importing things into the United States, Glock. Yeah, right? they're, they're smuggling in. It's a small device about this big. It's called an auto sear switch or a Glock switch. Right. Um, and, and that makes it like the James Bond villains yes. where it's just a Glock and it's a machine gun. Yes, it converts a normal uh, Glock handgun into a fully automatic machine gun. You can put a 50 round drum magazine on that uh, and you can you know, spray all over the place with your weapon. Um, they started smuggling these in in 2018. These are highly illegal in the United States. I bet. You can only get one with a federal permit. If you're a felon, forget about it. In 2018, according to ATF and other government agencies, the Chinese started smuggling them into the United States, selling them explicitly to criminal gangs and felons Jeez. in the United States. And, and now we've had this epidemic of machine gun fire on the streets of America. And, and nobody is pointing to the Chinese. Nobody is pointing to the Chinese. And what we get out of the Biden administration is, let's take away the Second Amendment rights of ordinary law-abiding Americans, but let's not talk about the fi fact that China is flooding our streets uh, and giving criminal gangs these highly potent tools. Okay, after a quick break, how China is working with left-wing groups in America to create social chaos, plus what every American should know about TikTok. First, let me tell you about uh, something we can solve pretty easily, hopefully, with you, um, and that is pain. If you are in pain, I want you to try Relief Factor. I lived with terrible pain, and Peter just came in and said, did you actually paint that painting? 
all the paintings here in, in the building are, are mine. And I couldn't, back in 2016, I couldn't because I could barely use my hands. They were in so much pain. The solution, after going to the Mayo Clinic and everything else, I couldn't find anything. My wife said, you gotta try this. And I'm much a bigger believer in, you know, all herbal remedies, but I'm kind of like, you know, we don't live in the colonial days, nor am I fighting in the Civil War. Let's try some real medicine. Um, I tried it because she wouldn't listen to me whine anymore if I didn't. Three week quick start, took three weeks and my pain started to go away and I can use my hands, I can write, I can paint, I can do whatever I want now. 70% of the people who have uh, gone on to try uh, Relief Factor, the three week quick start, have gone on to order more month after month. Try it now, 1995. Comes with Relief Factor's Feel Better, Your Money Back Guarantee, so give it a try. ReliefFactor.com, ReliefFactor.com, 800, the number four, Relief. Peter's book has everything that you need in it, and it's kind of like drinking from a fire hose here. His book is called Blood Money. Uh, can you explain the United Front? What is that? United Front is basically the CCP in China wanting to work with organizations in the United States that they don't necessarily agree with everything on, but they agree with on some core principles. So there was an internal document that we found. There's a, a group that provides intelligence for the CCP called the Center for the Study of Mar Marxist uh, Parties. Um, and they looked at the situation in the United States. And their assessment, Glenn, was that the Communist Party USA is like small, it's a bunch of cranks, they have right. no influence. But the Democrat Socialists of America, of which AOC and lot. Bernie Sanders, have a lot of influence and a lot of power. And their analysis was, this is not a perfect vehicle for us, but it is a vehicle nonetheless. If our churches would say the same thing yeah. Yeah. and put their differences yeah. aside, exactly. if our party would just put yeah. some differences aside and say, yeah. it's not perfect, but yeah. we're going to move forward here on some big things, maybe we could make a difference. Um, Neville Roy Singham and his wife, Jody Evans. Yeah, Neville Roy Singham uh, formed a company called ThoughtWorks in the United States. He was a big contractor for Huawei, the Chinese military mm. contractor. Then he sold his business to an investment fund partly owned by the Chinese government, made basically a billion dollars, and then promptly moved to China from the United States. Uh, uh, he's a Maoist, he's got friends in the CCP, uh, he takes the CCP line. Why do we care about this, this mm -hmm. guy doing this? Well, he's poured more than $160 million into radical causes over the last couple of years. Uh, those include a lot of the protest organizations that we see in the streets, a lot of the pro-Hamas protesters we see in the streets right now, they're actually organized by entities that he supports uh, or the people that work for him. Uh, when we had the riots in 2020, um, a lot of the organizations like PSL and FRSO mm -hmm. that led those violent protests, Roy Singham works with and supports. So we want to view this all through the prism of race conflict in the United States or the Middle East. Actually, the common denominator is Roy, Song, Roy Singham living in China and working with China. Okay, so how, there's something else you go into in the book. We're just covering so much ground so quickly. The transgender um, agenda yeah. is not, and you know that just by looking at it, this is not organic, yeah. it's not. This was the biggest surprise to me, I think, of anything in the book. Uh, two of the biggest funders of the radical transgender movement in America are actually Chinese-based billionaires. I didn't know that. Yeah, one of them is Roy Singham. Uh, his organization, through the People's Forum, has done a lot uh, to support the, the radical transgender uh, movement. The other one is Joe Tsai. Joe Tsai is the co-founder of Alibaba, um, which is a massive company. Uh, he has poured tens of millions of dollars into okay, so the trans. Are movement. either of them, no. you know, just big fans of trans? There's, 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 they're, 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 they are not trans themselves. There's yeah. no evidence. They have family members that are trans. But here, I think, is the kicker, Glenn. Both of them advocate strongly for these rights in the United States. They never bring them up in China. They never bring them up in China, where I think by anybody's calculation, the situation on, on you know, uh, gay rights and trans would be far more severe than it would be in the United right, so States. So let me just play devil's advocate. Yeah. Um, well, they actually believe in it, and here's the only place they can do it, and they're hoping that the West 
would get strong and that would then change China. Well, it could be, but the problem is that both of them take pro-CCP positions. Uh, I mean, to, to the toe the party line, there's no divergence. And the CCP has said they don't even want effeminate characters on television because it's gonna demasculate China. So it seems to me quite absurd to say, I love the CCP, I'm all in, yeah. but I'm in favor of these trans rights. I think the more logical explanation is they view this as, as, a, as, a, as a form of warfare against the United so States. So there was a, uh, a uh, revelation in a bunch of um, information that came out, I'm trying to remember who, who came out with it just a few weeks ago. Um, and they were talking about how the five eyes are now joining together and doing cognitive uh, warfare yeah. on, you know, we're doing it for Britain and Britain's doing it for us here. Yeah. Um, and the Chinese are doing cognitive warfare as well. Yeah, they view cognitive warfare as really what's gonna determine who wins the next war. They don't think it's gonna be tanks or it's gonna be aircraft carriers. It's gonna be cognitive warfare. Who controls the mind? Who influences the mind? Uh, and they're very, very optimistic. I quote from them in the book uh, about how um, TikTok is, in the words of one of their military officials, the Trojan horse with which they are piercing the United States. And they're saying that openly. They're saying that openly amongst themselves. Um, well, we, well, yeah. Why are we so damn stupid? Uh, I, I, think, I, I think there's stupidity. I also think there are a lot of people, I named some of them in the book, who are being paid large sums of money to shill for TikTok and for ByteDance. Uh, uh, they've got uh, probably a dozen former U.S. senators and congressmen on the payroll. They've hired Barack Obama's top advisors. They've hired some of Trump's former top advisors who are all getting paid to say there's nothing wrong with TikTok. The problem is uh, they already have a plan and they are enacting the plan and they describe in detail, again, don't take my word for it, look at what they're saying as to how this tool works. How does it work? It works very simply. You've gotta be subtle about it, direct about it, but you wanna tear down uh, young people's views of their country's history. You wanna tear down national symbols. Does this sound interesting, mm -hmm. sound, sound familiar? Uh, and then you wanna replace them with your values. And above all, you wanna to appeal to emotion because as they say, when a young person feels emotional about something, they believe it's their own selfish righteous indignation, even though they got it from somewhere else. And once they have that, they are now convinced they're not being manipulated. Now they're malleable in your hands. That's the way that these propagandists do it uh, and describe it. Um, and they see that TikTok is this sort of super highway to America's young people. Here's the thing, ByteDance, which controls TikTok, it's the parent company, has a joint Byte venture. Dance also does movies. Yes, yes. ByteDance does, yeah, absolutely. Big movies. Yeah, but ByteDance is right now has been doing a joint venture with the Chinese Ministry of State Security, looking at how you can manipulate people on online media. ByteDance is doing that. This is the parent company that, that millions of Americans are, are allowing free access to their children uh, through TikTok. That to me is absolute insanity. And what you have in the Biden administration is no interest in dealing with this. I mean, at least Donald Trump said, we're gonna force the sale of this, yeah. um, which would have been at least a solution, I think. Uh, Biden stepped back from that. I think part of the reason is because he's got some very powerful donors at the Carlyle Group and elsewhere that have major stakes in this company. Uh, and they stand to lose a lot of money if, if TikTok is banned or if the, 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 the sale is forced. So Joe Biden has chosen that expediency over the health of America's young people. And unfortunately, there are some Republicans as well that are taking the same line. Name them. Uh, so the Club for Growth, uh, which is an organization that, that is very libertarian. Very, yeah. And, and I, I would probably agree with them on 90% yeah, of it. me too. They're, one of their biggest donors is a guy named Jeff Yass. He's an investment uh, uh, gentleman in Pennsylvania. Uh, Jeff Yass, uh, it's estimated, could have his, his stake, which is about 20% of ByteDance, uh, could amount to $100 billion. So what he has done is he has pushed, the Club for Growth has now taken the position that they don't want TikTok interfered with, they don't want a forced sale, they don't want a ban, uh, and there's being pressure put on Republicans in the Senate to adopt the same position. Is there no one? that you found that is like, loves country over self? 
So I'd say there's a couple of people, um, uh, certainly in the Senate uh, Republican side, Ted Cruz has been great on this issue. Uh, and I would say, you know, Senator Mark Warner, Democrat from Virginia, on TikTok, he has been really, really solid. Um, the problem is uh, there is so much money sloshing around D.C. from ByteDance and from TikTok. Um, a lot of people are making money and looking the So other way. what kind of information are they gathering for, on TikTok? Well, they, they, they gather, um, they can gather uh, uh, all the contacts in your phone. They know what your location is. They know what other apps you have. You know what, what other apps you have open. Uh, and they use this information not just to track you, but to determine what material you're going to see. So um, this has been a problem with a lot of young people and how the Chinese have manipulated it. If you watch a video that is disturbing um, and you continue to watch it, the Chinese will have you watch more of that same video. And this became a problem in Sweden, uh, of all places, yeah. where young people were uh, watching videos uh, that were put up that were talking about the fear of a Russian invasion. Uh, there was so much hysteria among young people. They were crying, they were calling suicide lines. Mm -hmm. It created this national panic. This shows the emotional power and tool that TikTok has. And we have a lot of you know, emotional and cognitive problems developing in the United States too with young people. They, they, they get on this device. Uh, they can't watch lo longer movies anymore. It makes them anxious. And the important thing is, Glenn, what we have is TikTok in the United States. The sister app is called Doyun in China. It's nothing like TikTok. Nothing. Nothing like TikTok. Nothing. If you've ever gone to Instagram or anything, you've seen these brilliant children playing the piano yeah. and, and, and people doing just amazing things. Yeah. That's what they feed their people. Yes. Our kids get cotton candy. They get the, the, the person in blue hair screaming about something. Uh, and what they get is art, history, culture, learn this new skill, engineering, et cetera. And this is part of the cognitive warfare, the term that they use. They're saying, what is the next generation in, most, in both countries going to look like, just based on what they're being exposed to in social media? God help us. Yeah. God help us. All right, back in just a minute with Peter Schweizer. Uh, to discuss Hollywood's collaboration with the Chinese Communist Party and to get his read on the Biden impeachment inquiry. We'll do that in a second. Uh, there are so many things. Peter, doesn't it just seem like, uh, I mean, every day you get up and you're like, what? Yeah. There are so many things. I told my staff just the other day, we should be on red alert here. Um, because I don't know what's gonna happen, I don't know how it's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen, but one major event, and this whole thing can come down. Yeah. Um, scary. It's that brittle, it's yeah. that brittle, our society. I mean, we're all so isolated and... and uh, it's bad. Yeah. It's no, bad. It's, it's, it's um, let me tell you about a way that I have prepared for years now, emergency food storage. Uh, they have everything that you need, food and so much more. Company that I have trusted for years now is My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply has helped millions of American families prepare for whatever might come their way. And many of them start with a four-week emergency food kit. You should have at least four weeks of food in your house for each member of your family. There are 16 food and drink varieties. They, the meals are 2,000 calories every day, so you can get through the emergency situation. It has breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, drinks, desserts. It's everything, and it's actually good, and they will last up to 25 years in storage. Maybe most importantly, the food is really good. Uh, don't tell my wife this, but some of the food storage may have been used when she wasn't home for a few days because I don't want to go to the store. Anyway, mypatriotsupply.com, mypatriotsupply.com. Get a four-week food kit, $60 off right now, plus free shipping, mypatriotsupply.com. So in your book, Blood Money, you talk about, you actually quote a line um, that the Chinese have in a military textbook, the need to use media to win the propaganda war. The quote is, the crumbling of the regime always starts in the realm of ideas. They have had their hooks into um, Hollywood for a long time. It started with just editing things out. Right. Okay. 
But now it's not that way, is it? Right, no, it's, it's actually adding things in uh, that are, of course, always pro-CCP. Uh, and not just in the films as they're shown in China, but as they're shown in the United States. Uh, so, of course, Steven Spielberg has done this, Amblin Entertainment, Paramount. All the major studios have these co-finance deals uh, where the Chinese put in capital funds, but, of course, then they get to determine what's in the script. Sure. And that's when you'll see, like Paramount, you'll see the mountain, and then after that, you'll see Bite Dance. Right, exactly. You'll see the the the, the co-financier. So you look at, at at some of the big blockbusters that we've had over the last, um, you know, uh, ten years, and you see the pattern. You know, Matt Damon movie, The Martian, where remember he's trapped yeah. on Mars. How does he end up getting rescued? He gets rescued by NASA because NASA is given advanced by technology from who? The Chinese. Mm. That's how he's rescued. That was put in there because the film was co-financed by the Chinese and they wanted that part of the story narrative. Same thing happened in Transformers. Same thing happens in a lot of these films. Kung Fu Panda 3, uh, which of course Steven Spielberg uh, executive produced. Um, the first two Kung Fu Panda movies were about you know the panda bear sort of <laughs> improving right. his skill sets, right. become a better Good individual. Good lessons in that, yes. yeah. Kung Fu Panda 3 was about the collective. Don't stand out from the crowd. Be part of the group. Be part of the collective. And the film kind of ends with this sort of almost peasant's war where the villagers kind of rise up. Um, that, again, was financed by the Chinese, and the, and the script was changed because that's how China wanted that script done. So this is being embedded along with what's happening on social media with uh, TikTok. This is what's happening with films. It's also happening in video games as well. Many video game companies are now uh, owned by China. Talk to me about the political connections. I know Adam Schiff is deep in this, Gavin Newsom. Yeah, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, they they all have various ties to uh, Chinese entities or networks that I think are problematic uh, and prevent them from talking about these issues. Gavin Newsom, governor of California, will not call out uh, China on fentanyl. He went there on a trip. He said, oh, I raised fentanyl, but there was no finger pointing because we can't have finger pointing with the Chinese. It's your presses, <laughs> your money, your <laughs> people, know. your ingredients. Exactly right. But but otherwise, they're totally uninvolved. Right. Right? Um, so he won't finger point. Well, what is his history? His history is a long association with Chinese organized crime figures. And I don't say that loosely. When he was mayor of San Francisco, he appointed as the head of Chinatown Economic Development a guy who was a dragon head, that is a mafia leader in Chinese organized crime. His name was Alan Lung. Uh, he became friends with another dragon head, uh, a guy who went by the name Shrimp Boy. I mean, the name alone, you'd wonder, why is this guy calling himself Shrimp Boy? He was also a dragon head in organized crime. Gavin Newsom gave money from taxpayer money from San Francisco to this guy's nonprofit until people in the Chinese community say, you can't do this. Why this are is you the doing godfather just in San Francisco with the Chinese instead of the Italians. Well, yeah, exactly. And, and you know, he had on his transition team a, a yet another guy who was involved with Chinese organized crime who went to jail on a murder for hire plot. Oh my gosh. These are all organized criminals involved in the drug trade. When he was mayor of San Francisco, Glenn, he also set up something called China SF to bring China investment dollars to San Francisco. Gavin Newsom signed his name. He picked a partner in uh, China whose name is Vincent Lowe. Vincent Lowe was already publicly known to be associated with Chinese organized crime, and yet that's who he picked to partner with him. And lo and behold, some of the early businesses that came and invested in San Francisco through this scheme were tied to Chinese organized crime. So does Gavin Newsom really want to have a conversation about this? No, he doesn't. Uh, Adam Schiff. Uh, Adam Schiff uh, has received money uh, from guys that are now international fugitives who were involved in money laundering for Chinese organized crime. Uh, he never talks about this. The fentanyl deaths in his district have gone up 1,200 percent from 2016 to the present. He will not call out China on the fentanyl trade, and I believe it's because of these embarrassing ties that he has to these networks. So, uh, Peter, you and I are both, you know, you might actually be a historian, but I'm not. I'm just a you know a history lover. Um, this is different than the corruption that I have seen in the past. Yeah. Um, this corruption leads to the destruction and the death, literal death of Americans. Yeah. This is you know Hollywood did the same thing with the Germans. The Germans mm -hmm. had the 
uh, next biggest cinema group, you know. It was, it was the United States, and then the next group of people that went to the movies like us was Germany. And Germany and the Nazis poured money into Hollywood. They've done that before. But this from our politicians, getting in bed with these people mm -hmm. and then turning a blind eye to this is, is more than criminal. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, is there anything in history that compares to this? No, there's not. There's not. Um, and, you know, it's easy to say, oh, well, they're doing it for the money. But, you know, really, for most people, I think you couldn't pay them enough money to engage in this kind of behavior. And yet, that's exactly uh, what is going on. Um, and, and it's a problem on both sides of the aisle. Mitch McConnell, uh, you know, we've talked about Mitch McConnell before, but Mitch McConnell, uh, his wife, Elaine Chow, uh, she's involved with the foremost mm -hmm. shipping group. Um, the Chinese government has made that shipping group enormously successful. They buy their ships for them. They finance the construction of those ships. They provide crews for those My ships. Gosh. Uh, and they give them contracts. And so they've made this business very, very successful. So if Mitch McConnell were to set up, uh, stand up in the U.S. Senate and say something critical of the Chinese or actually do something that damages China, they could destroy the family shipping business overnight. Uh, and so he's just simply not going to do it. So you look at all of the things. They're in everything, right? They're in our universities. Mm -hmm. They've captured our politicians. They've captured our cities. They've captured our kids through TikTok. Um, they're capturing Americans over the border with the drugs that are coming in. Um, after looking at all of these, where do you think we should start? What, what, how do we take this apart? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, I begin the book talking about Winston Churchill, who described how uh, a lot of the British leadership didn't see what was going on in Europe, and he said they were staring with vacant eyes at what was going on uh, around them. And that's what our leaders are, vacant eyes. They're willfully blind. Yes. They're choosing to not look because they know what's going on, but they're either being paid or they don't want to do the heavy lift. I think it begins with the Chinese political influence campaign in Washington. So, like it would help the Biden impeachment. Yes, absolutely. I think I think things like the Biden impeachment, I think you've got to have a zero tolerance policy. None of these guys should be doing in no. investment deals with the Chinese. Why are we allowing ByteDance, which is controlled by the CCP, to hire lobbyists? They've yeah. got they've got half a dozen former US senators on the payroll. I mean, it's outrageous. So, you've got to begin with that. That at least sort of short circuits their ability to try to head off some of the major decisions that need to be made. Um, I've only got 30 seconds. China, by far the biggest threat to America? Yeah, Russia is, is a diminished power, still a threat, but a declining threat. China is the ascendant threat, and they really do want to defeat us. The name of the book is Blood Money, and the author you've been listening to is Peter Swizer. Um, he His books are amazing and thorough, and you can count on them. He's got it all footnoted, so you can see all of the... Um, all of the evidence. Peter, thank you. Thanks. We'll have more on this tomorrow on radio. From Dallas, good night, America.